All right, hey, how's it going, guys? You're watching the Vinyl Corner. We are here at Radstorm, baby, Radstorm. It is Obey Convention. We're here with the one and only Justice Yellman. How are you doing today? Oh, good, mate, good. Oh, that's awesome. So how did you find this art form of, like, playing glass? I'm like, I, I guess a lot of my, my early experiments was t uh, turntablism. I used mm -hmm. to get records, break them up, and okay. do, like, like, kind of usual, like, uh, turntable assemblage stuff and that kind of... Go into lots of different things, but long story short, I guess the the glass kind of evolved from my turntable playing by basically removing all different parts of the turntable one by one until I was finally just left with a like a giant time and tip stylus that I vibrate with my mouth rather than a record. Um, if you know what I mean, it's a it's a slow and long evolution from from doing this to, to doing this, but it, it all makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Could you explain to us like how you set up your gear and how it all works? Alrighty, well, um, well first of all, when I, when I vibrate the glass, I'm vibrating, and it's like, it's very, it's very quiet. Like it's almost in, in, inaudible vibrations going through the glass. The first thing I do is, is a, a, amp it up with a preamp. And then I run into a three channel, um, loop splitter so it sends it into three different effects chains and uh, one of them I heighten up the treble, one of them I heighten up the mids and one of them I heighten up the bass and so I get this really sick sound out of that mm -hmm. and I um, also use, I use a bit of octaving and pitch shifting to get rid of the, the get rid of the original pitch that way it's less prone to feedback um, because when the speakers come out with the same frequency that's going through the glass that's when you get the feedback so if you can just pitch it up or pitch it down and, and not have it at that pitch you have you can make a really loud sound with a contact microphone and yeah and it just it doesn't wail or you can stop playing and you get you get, get silence um that's it, just a technique and other things i use the envelope filter i love the envelope filter so it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like there's there's kind of round gloopy edges yeah so when people first when you like first perform this in front of people what was their overall like expression like how do they feel about it oh some different expressions and thoughts i suppose but um earlier on like there used to be a lot of more bloodier shows i guess um through me not being that for me with materials so i used to cut myself more but more by accident i suppose like um so there was there's this kind of weird anxiety that would go in an audience because i'd i'd be i'd be hurt and there'll be i wouldn't even realize i'm hurt i'm bleeding and stuff and everyone's kind of shocked and wor worried but all the same time enjoying themselves and amazed with the sonic so it's just kind of to and throw emotionally there um, but you know I've heard everything from grown men faint to teenagers throwing up to I don't know it's just that pretty much leads perfectly into my next question here have you ever uh, received permanent damage from a performance I mean you are biting glass and shit so uh, there's lots of scars on my face and I guess they're permanent just that's about it though huh that's uh about it. Well, you, no, I haven't lost an eye yet. I've, I've got, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'm close to losing an eye. I'm in San Francisco, once I've got this scar here. And that was pretty deep. If that, if that got my eye, it wouldn't mean bad. But, um, you know, I've I cut my throat sometimes. But um, mostly superficial, you know. You're all right. It's just a little blood. Also, you have worked with Death Grips. And I was kind of curious on how that even came to be. Um, well, I worked with Zach when the Boredoms came through Sydney in 2010. I set up some side shows for him, him and Hasham, um, and we decided to play together. Um, so we, we did a set, and then years later, I was I was traveling through. I was planning to travel through Sacramento from well, basically. I, I was driving from Oakland to Baltimore, and the Sacramento was in, in the way. So I wrote to Zach because I knew he lived there, and said, "Is it possible to set up a show there?" He said, "No, nah, no shows here, but just come to my studio and record. I'd like to use your sounds in Death Grips." And so I went there, and did about two sets like like sort of like that about the same same length i don't know maybe shorter really yeah i don't know what happened after that but um apparently it's in two tracks <laughs> it is so is this your first time in halifax it is yeah yeah so um, how, are, how are you enjoying the city so far it's colder than i expected like i was i was i was leaving the australian winter which is warmer than this to a 
a Canadian summer, which is colder than home. I wasn't even going to pack this jacket, but I thought, oh, I've got to get to the airport. <laughs> um, and I just have it in my, in my suitcase the whole trip, but now I'm glad I brought it with me. <laughs> and uh, what are your plans for 2019? Uh, well, as soon as I've got 30 more shows, then I go back home and look after my baby. Perfect. Well, thank, thank you very you. much for taking the time to take thank this you. interview. Goodbye.